My name is Mia and I am coming to you from Texas in the United States. This is a mostly knitting podcast, but every once in a while I will sprinkle in some crocheting, some sewing, and some spinning. Uh, first of all, I want to say welcome to all my previous viewers and for all the new ones that have recently subscribed. I have been blown away um, by all the new people that have joined. In my last podcast, I mentioned how I would do a giveaway when I got to 100 subscribers. And I honestly thought I had a few months before that would happen. I thought I had time to think through a giveaway and sew something. <laughs> um, I honestly did not think that it would be the next podcast. So I want to thank um, Amy from Noble Character Crafts. Um, who mentioned me in her podcast and a few people came from there so I just wanted to say thank you. I am so happy that you all are here. Um, it is a little harder. It was easier when I knew I was just speaking to about 23 people and now there's almost 123 people. I think I just keep telling myself it's okay, keep going, I can edit out any awkwardness or weirdness but the whole thing may just be awkward and weird anyway let's get started i've been pushing this off all day because i was so nervous and it is now 805 on a sunday so if i don't do this today it's just gonna get harder and harder my heart is hurting <laughs> okay let's get started we will start with what i'm wearing uh this is one of my finished objects in all seriousness, my heart is hurting. Like, it hurts right here. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. We will start with what I'm wearing. Um, this is my Seacoast sweater by Hohi Locatelli. I don't think I have the pattern with me. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it too good. Oh, there you go. Okay. So, sorry, I had to start this again because my card was full. So I did, if you see hers, hers is a little more off the shoulder than mine. Um, I didn't block mine as aggressively as I could have. Um, I was a little scared because I think this is the first time I've ever blocked 100% wool um, so next time I'll block it a little more you can see I stopped to weave in my ends <laughs> I have one long piece here um, we'll just tuck that under there for now I literally finished it this morning um, I had some of the sleeve left and I was doing a virtual zoom time um, so yeah so here it is it's done sleeves everything came out good um it was very enjoyable to knit it was top down um and i knit it in the brooklyn tweed shelter <laughs> i just happened to have it here i knit it in the brooklyn tweed shelter in the pumice is it pumice or pumice i think it's pumice in the brooklyn tweed pumice um I'm so nervous, I can hear my heartbeat in my ear. Okay, let <laughs> me take it easy. Um, so yes, so it was very good. Um, it was very easy to knit. I felt a little bit of a drag on the needles, but aside from that, it's been great. I will definitely, um, while I have some more of this yarn in another color, um, to knit another sweater so I'll be using it again so this is my first finished object my second one I haven't I may have to pin this up <laughs> um, I haven't finished sorry sorry I'm just gonna pin this little piece of hair up so I don't have to keep moving it I finished my mittens my world's 
simplest mittens, which I also have not weave woven in the ends. Um, these, are, these are the world's simplest mittens by Tin Can Knits. And they are not perfect. They are definitely things that I would do. This is the first time I've ever knit mittens, and it's also the first time... Well, since it's the first time I've ever knit mittens, obviously I've never knit mittens with self-striping yarn. So, these are my mittens. I am so happy with them. They feel so good. What I don't like is that I wasn't sure what to do with the thumb. So here you can see the blue from this stripe. I wish that blue wasn't there, so I would have had to figure something out and done something differently. I may still rip out. That's why I haven't woven in the ends. I may still... On this one, it didn't come out. On this side, I have one small stripe. And on this one, I have the stripe going all the way around. So I may redo the thumbs. I'm not too sure. But they are warm. Um, and I like them. So I will be able to submit these to the mitt along with hay brown berry and earth tones girl um, i made that i made the deadline in time for that one and i knit this i don't have it anymore but the other skein is downstairs i knit it in the yarn that was sent to me by accident from knit picks which was felici in the rustic cabin colorway um so yes, that was very good. I'm very happy. Oh, here goes my Seiko sweater. Okay. My heart hurts so bad. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. <sighs> okay. So I am very happy with these. I'm hoping I'll be able to keep them. Something tells me one of my children may take them. We'll see. I have pretty long fingers. For a female, um, so these I knit these in the the next to largest size they had. Um, so yes, so that is done. So those are my two finished objects. Um, I do have a couple of works in progress that I wanted to share. One of them is the Rizumu shawl. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It's by Cecilia Campochiaro. Cecilia Campochiaro. I hope that's, that's it right there. And I purchased this, I was traveling with my husband, I think one day in maybe Oklahoma. There was a knitting store there. And my husband purchased this yarn for me. It's called Nature's Luxury. And it is 65% silk, 35% baby camel. So one of them is called, the colorway I'm assuming is... I honestly don't know which is which color. One of them is called Chinchilla and the other one is called Terra Venom. I should have looked them up. Which are these two colors. And I have been working on this for about two years. And it's very easy to knit, but it's I don't know what's the, I don't know if this is moss stitch or seed stitch. I'm not sure exactly what the difference is between the two of them. It's just in essence a lot of knitting and purling, knitting and purling, knitting and purling. <laughs> I know that doesn't tell you much, but I guess I'm in the middle of a row here, so this is what I am up to. Um it I don't know if you, you really the camera doesn't do it justice in terms of how drapey it is and how soft it feels. Uh, in essence, this is what it should look like. And what you can't see on there is that on the green portion, it you bind off with the gray yarn. 
So I will do this and it has you save a little piece so that you can bind off the gray portion with this color. So I am really hoping to work on this. Like I said, it's easy. It's just slow going just because you're going back and forth. Um, you're going back and forth between knitting and purling. I am sorry that this podcast is so bad, but my heart hurts. Like I have a serious pain here. And I think it's just because I'm so nervous. So yes, so the Rizumu shawl. So I'm sharing this one. So during my vlog last week, I shared that I had eight whips. So this was one of them and the mittens was one. So that means I'm down to six, which is really good. I have not touched the socks, which all they need are two heels and one toe. So that's another quick one that I should be able to finish soon. So this is... My knitting work in progress. My other work in progress is um, my granny square afghan, which I thought I would do one a week, but I have a whole bunch. <laughs> okay, first of all, Joining these is way more addicting than I thought it would be. It's super easy to do. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I joined six rows. It's already pretty heavy, so it'll be warm. I joined six rows using the mattress stitch. So you see, you can't really tell. Oh, you can see it a little, but then that's a white one. <laughs> I used the worst color to show that you can't really see it. I guess you can see it a little. It's not completely invisible. I thought it was pretty invisible. So I had to, if you saw my vlog, I went up to the attic and I found some of this um, Karen Simply Soft yarn in gray and since it's pretty invisible um, that's what I used to do it so I did use the mattress stitch which for the three that I did two years ago that I attached that's what I used but I completely I didn't remember the name so when someone mentioned I think it was Fernanda mentioned um, do the mattress stitch when I looked it up I was happy that that was the one that I had tried so yes so these are all connected I am so happy I will continue working on this I probably won't show it each week unless I've made major progress um, yeah so I, what I do need to look up is so I you can see here when I connected them I left the tail so that I'm not sure if I use this tail to connect the row the next row next to it or if I should use one long piece of yarn to connect the next row next to it I'm not sure if that makes sense because um, if I don't use this to connect the next row then I'm having to weave this in so I'm assuming these little tails I left I will use this to connect the next row, I hope. I haven't looked it up, to be honest with you. I need to do that. But yes, these are all done. That is one crochet work in progress. And I have one more crochet work in progress. I'm not sure where I saw this. Sorry. It's called this. It's also a crochet project. I normally don't crochet very much. Like I said, the Granny Square Afghan was from like years and years ago but I came across this photo and I thought it was so beautiful and I wanted to make it without really looking to see if it was knit or crochet it turns out it is crochet 
So, this is what it looks like. Do you see the baskets? How pretty. Excuse me. There they are on the wall. Here you can see the difference in size and also that they're on these hooks. You can see the hooks better there. So, this is the pattern. They're called slouchy, they're called slouchy hanging baskets. And they are by Alexander Alexandra Travel. Um, it says designer two of wands and then in parentheses it says Alexander Travel. It says it's beginner. But because it had been a while since I crocheted, I was a complete spaz. I don't know, the first time I did it, it looked like a breast with a nipple. Um, it was like super pointy and I realized I was doing something wrong. So I started again and I'm up to here. Um, so this is what I'm up to. So I'm very, very at the beginning. But it's been like this since the summer. This yarn, okay, I used whatever yarn it calls for, which I believe is Lion Brand. Um, yes, it's Lion Brand yarn retweed. I don't know if anyone has ever heard of that, that yarn. It's retweed and Arctic ice. So I purchased a gray one and a yellow one. If you guys have been watching, if you guys watch the first two episodes, you'll see that um, I have a thing for gray and mustard yellow. I know they came out as the Pantone colors for 2021, but for once I was ahead of my time. <laughs> I'm normally late to the party for everything. So this is what I am doing. I am using a size... Yes, an eye hook. I'm using an eye hook, which is 5.50 millimeters. And this is what the yarn looks like. Retweed. And this is what I'm up to. I even purchased the hooks. I believe I purchased them from Amazon. And you can see here. There you go. So this part just goes on the wall and it sticks out on an angle. So I would really like to get that done. The only thing I realize is that I forgot. I forgot, I guess, how much you need to count in crochet. I guess maybe for some things you don't, but for this one, I felt like I had to keep counting and I'm so used to just knitting and then going back and counting. You know, you, I can easily count my stitches, but for some reason I was having a hard time counting my stitches on this. So I need to figure that out. It's sort of a f older finished object, but it goes into acquisitions. So I just wanted to share. And also I need help. I always need help. I purchased something from Canon hand dyed yarns but before I go into that I wanted to share this is the Russell Street shawl which looks like this and there you can see it again this is actually the shawl I have on I think on my profile picture. So I'm going to sort of show it to you hiding something because then I, I'll explain. So I of course, <laughs> so I used, um, I used, 
I'm going to tell you right now what I used. I believe I used no. I thought I this I thought this was the fall rainbow, but it may be the outline outline their one. Yes, I did. I started with a different set, but I switched to the Outlander mini set, which is this one, and it has all these colors. I'm going to hold this part here because I don't want you to see that yet. And it has all these colors all the way down. And then on the tip here, it has a little pop there of color as well. So I have it on my Instagram. So I went to pull this out um, for the podcast and I noticed there was a small hole in one of the colors and then I carefully looked and I found another one. So I grabbed some stitch markers and I grabbed onto the surrounding stitches so I am 99.9% .9 sure this was my fault not the yarn and the only reason I'm not saying 100% is because I didn't see it happen but one of the jackets that I've been wearing this winter had a little strip of velcro and I feel like it got caught on the velcro I separated the two and I was somewhere and I didn't check to see if there was any damage. So I'm assuming, because I've worn this a few times and I never saw those holes. Those holes were not there. So, so I don't know what to do. I'm pretty sure I don't have any more of these two colors. Um... Looking through my yarn, I may be able to find something similar. This one should be easy to um, find. But these minis were dyed and sold with this shawl in mind. So you end up using almost the entire little skein. And they are so cute and tiny. I believe they are five grams. Okay, so first let me finish telling you about this. Okay, so I believe they're five grams, so you end up using the entire color. Um, so I had knit this entire strip of all the colors, and it came with a gray larger skein. But I didn't want to use the gray one because I felt like I had a grayish color here and a grayish color here and I wanted it to pop a little more so my husband and I went to our local yarn store this was about a year ago and we kind of went back and forth we pulled out a few skeins to compare it to and of course I walked away with a mustard colored um, base to go with it so the reason I showed this to you today is because I hopped on Canon Hand Dyed's website and I purchased a few more of those little mini sets. When I tell you they are so cute, they're the cutest minis I've ever seen. Because first of all, they come in a little circle. And look how tiny they are. Okay, I have... A regular mini skein here of I want to say this is 20 grams look how cute this is 20 grams I want to say this is five so you can see the difference um, this was when I had died fooling around um, so I have not purchased yarn for over a year because I hurt my shoulder 
and I wasn't knitting so it didn't make sense to just keep buying yarn if I wasn't in a place where I could knit but now that I'm knitting again I purchased this one it's called isn't it romantic and it's it's a hundred percent superwash merino oh it's 20 yards okay this one is 18 to 20 yards per color I hope you can see how beautiful these are it's like a fade set they're so cute I love them so much so I did go a little crazy though and I purchased probably more than I should have this one is enchantment fireside chat spicy Fireside chat. Enchantment. Let me show this one again. Isn't it romantic? This last one was a kit. And it's the Under Rainbow Cow Kit. And it came with a gray. It has some, um, I guess a tonal gray. It has some other colors there. Hopefully you can see. And it came with this little mini pack. I enjoyed knitting this one so much that I know I will use these. I don't have minis. Aside from some that I... I dyed myself when I was fooling around with dyeing yarn. I actually, by chance, just happened to have it in this bag. I had tried knitting, I had tried dyeing some, a fade, a small fade set for myself. Um, so this, these are the only minis that I have in that one. Um, but I really enjoyed knitting this shawl and I wanted to knit more not maybe not specifically this one um i wanted to look up other ones um i did look up the under rainbow cow which that's this set that's what it's supposed to be for and this is what it looks like i'm not sure if i'm gonna knit that or not but um, or what I'm going to use these for, but I, I'm definitely going to use them. And I, I really like the size of this shawl, especially here in Texas where, um, it doesn't, it gets cold, but not like ridiculously cold. Um, so if you have any suggestions as far as how to fix those holes in my um, shawl, please let me know. I did look up some videos, but a lot of people had yarn already in the same color. So I don't think I have any yarn in that color. So I need to figure this out. Um, so that is sort of, sort of, I guess dream knitting and acquisitions so that was from canon hand dyed yarns and she the first time i saw her was at a dfw fiber festival she mostly dyes yarn based on books which is why um this one is the outlander was the outlander set um and I am assuming, I don't know what these are all from, but a lot of them are from books. So, 
but I think the Isn't It Romantic one is my favorite one. I didn't get a chance to sew my aprons. Um, it was a busy week. I did start to sew this little bag earlier today when I was avoiding podcasting out of fear. Um, but I don't think I'm going to, I don't know if I'll finish it because I realize it needs to be lined and the fabric was too thin and I'm not liking the way it's looking. It's this little tiny bag. Um, it was just from a pattern that I found on Etsy. I don't know how you want to pronounce that. It doesn't have you line it and it says you can use 100% cotton or linen. Linen obviously would have been a little thicker. I just used the cotton that I had. Um, but what I don't like is, and this is completely my fault, it has you cut this in one piece. So it's right side up on this side. But it's on this side, it's upside down. So I'm not sure, I may, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So those clips here is because I just stopped sewing it. And I use these clips, I don't, a lot of people probably know what these are. I use these clips in place of pins because it's a lot faster. Um, so I just stuffed it with yarn to give it some shape and that's, I stuffed it with the minis just by chance. So yeah, so this is a little bag. Um, I was debating whether to use this fabric or this one that I found on my shelf, which I thought was pretty cute. Um, so I'll sure I'll do something with that. Um, I think that's it. I don't have any more sweater whips which means I should cast on another sweater. Um, the other day I was on Instagram and I went to show my husband something. I don't remember what I was showing him, but he was like, wait, wait, go back, go back. And when I looked, it was um, a photo by Jennifer Steingast and she was sharing, I guess she's starting a sweater along or a knit along on, one, on her sweaters. And my husband thought all of her sweaters were so beautiful. Um, and I had been thinking of starting one of hers since I started the color work mittens and I really enjoyed doing color work. I've been wanting now to knit a color work sweater. So I'll see, maybe I can pick through one of her sweaters. Um, I asked my husband which one he thought, but he's sort of on to me now because, so, the picture I showed you for this one, you saw he was putting them in order for me. And I normally ask him all the time, what color do you think? I'm super undecisive when it comes to color. And um, he used to put them in order for me, but now he realizes if he does, I just do what he says. And he wants it to be for me. He wants it to be my choice <laughs> uh, lately what I've been having to do is put them in order myself like or pick colors myself and then tell him okay I pick now you pick and you know then I'll make a decision but yeah he's on to me so lately he hasn't been helping me so so my youngest son now has been helping me he's the one that was helping me decide the colors for the Peary the Shetland Peary mittens that I started um, so, yeah, so I'm on my own now when it comes to choosing colors. The giveaway. <laughs> so I was not expecting to do a giveaway this soon, so I don't have anything to show. So in our home, we have a tendency to vote a lot because it's six of us. If you saw the last vlog, you may have heard my son say, well, each family member should pick one and then you guys can vote. So I think what I will do is each family member will pick a skein of yarn. So we'll pick six skeins of yarn. Um, and then whoever wins the giveaway can choose one of those six. And I will also add in a few other things. Um, maybe a couple of progress keepers. 
and maybe I can sew a bag. Um, so I'm not sure whether just to sew the bag or allow the winner to choose what color bag they want. Um, the only problem with that is that once they choose, then I have to sew it so they wouldn't get it right away. Like I wouldn't be able to mail it out right away. It would have to at least take a week um, to give myself enough time to sew it. So I don't know, what do you think? Because if I had to choose a yarn right now, we'd be here forever. I think we'll do that. Okay, so the giveaway, um, we will comment below. Can you tell I'm making this up as I go along? Because I know everyone doesn't have access to Ravelry. We will do the giveaway here on YouTube. Leave a comment below, either what you're grateful for, or how many whips you have, subscribe, and then the next podcast, um, I will pick a winner. So the giveaway will close February 20th, and then when I wake up February 21st, which is a Sunday, I podcast on Sundays, when I wake up the 21st, I will pick a winner from the comments that are down below. Okay, so let's do that. This is exciting. I am so blown away um, by how many people subscribed. I am so thankful. It's so fun to read the comments and to be able to respond. I may not respond the same day, but I've been trying um, to sit down maybe every day and a half, every two days to respond to comments. Um, I've been sitting here for about 45 minutes and my heart is still hurting me. Um, anyway, okay. The good thing is since there's only 118 of you subscribed, your chances of winning are pretty good. You have 1 in 118 chance of winning. Um, it made me laugh because I, I forgot who's podcast I came across and they were doing like a 10,000 subscriber giveaway or a 20,000 subscriber giveaway and I'm so ecstatic for my hundred I'm so ecstatic that there's a hundred of you um, so thank you Amy of Noble Character Crafts podcast who mentioned um, my podcast and Alexandra from Fiberbound mentioned me um, as well on her podcast and I was so excited and I guess that's what we should do is if we do come across a podcast that we really enjoy we should share it um, it's it's pretty hard because there are a lot of podcasts out there that when you're starting new it seems like you can't really get your foot in um, and then there's some people who their fir first podcast just blows up and they have thousands of subscribers from the beginning. I'm just I'm happy with the way it's going. I, originally my husband said he would be on the podcast, whatever, it didn't matter. And then yesterday he said maybe he could be like, I don't know if those of you remember or who have seen Home Improvement. Do you remember The Neighbor? who wouldn't show his face you could he had I think he always had a hat on and you can only see him from here up so he was like I'll be like the neighbor on home improvement um, so he said he'll be behind the camera while we choose yarn for the giveaway but he's also gonna choose one so you'll at least hear him I'm sure you'll get a glimpse of him again oh maybe next time I can show some of the quilts that I have that are also a work in progress. Maybe. Look how pretty these all look. Thank you so much for watching. Um, feel free to subscribe or to share. It's so lovely. As far as my um, bags go, I did not find a pattern online. 
I just kept fooling around with it until I thought they looked like the original ones. So it really was like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. The first one I made, do I have it here? Came out massive. Let me see if I can find it. The, this was the first one I made, just for size reference. Oh, here goes the rest of the yarn for that, um, for this pattern. <laughs> for this pattern, I purchased this yellow. So this is what it looks like. So I have a yellow and a gray one. Um, so it was comically massive. You can see it doesn't really have the boxy shape on the bottom. So this was the first one I made. I saw it was coming out big and I just continued just to be able to get the hang of um, doing the casing for the drawstring um and i was trying to also get the bottom a little better and the pockets inside so that was the first one i think the second one i made was too small and then finally i got the correct um size and you can see the bottom there is the it has the rectangular shape the way the original does whereas i don't know what happened here anyway okay i really really want this i don't want it to feel like it's me just talking um so please um let me know how you guys are doing let me know what you're working on um i guess i do i guess i should move some of this over to ravelry maybe it, it feels a little bit more like a community on ravelry i don't really use ravelry aside from just purchasing patterns on there um i just have never had the time to go in there and add my projects um that's about it i will talk to you later bye i always feel weird saying it i always feel weird saying feel free to subscribe i always feel free i always feel weird saying please subscribe um I don't know why. Okay. I know I did that really bad. I lived in Seattle for a while. You'd think, you'd think I know how to do this a little better. <laughs> anyway, so this is it. choking myself so look it landed right where <laughs> my stitch markers are let's pretend it's not there or how many whips you have the number of whips you have you may be grateful for the number of whips you have <laughs> so you can combine them let me try my let's try this again I would not have purchased it for myself because it was ridiculously expensive. Um, it's very nice. It's very nice yarn. Um, but I'm the one that does the budgeting <laughs> in our house. So when my husband and I met, we were 16 and I was working at the time and he wasn't. And at 16, we opened up a joint bank account. And since I was working and he wasn't, I was the one that kind of, um, you know, like Mother's Day came around and he didn't have enough money <laughs> to buy his mother a gift. So we bought it together. So I was the one who kind of took charge of the money and it just continued when we got married. Um, so I wouldn't have purchased this yarn 
because I the one who keeps the budget anyway had to fluff the hair <laughs> okay so um, it is hard when you there are so many podcasts and it is so I'm using the word so too many times it's